Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Julio Novoa. Today is Saturday, uh, December the 10th, and I wanted to do a quick presentation on um, the Asia effect and polypropylene mesh. Now, I'm going to be posting a lot of my videos on my YouTube channel because I'm actually getting um, flagged by simple presentations on TikTok or even on Facebook. So I think that YouTube tends to be a little bit more open-minded about scientific presentations, both, both pro and con, and YouTube is actually available to most of the world. So I'm going to go ahead and start posting on YouTube, my YouTube channel under No eShore. So again, my name is Dr. Julio Novoa, N-O-V-O-A, because I know when it translates, it's a little bit weird and how it's spelled. And today I wanted to talk with all of my friends that are suffering from issues with uh, polyester fibers. So this does include uh, the group of the eShore group, as well as all of the uh, hernia meshes, because eShore uh, poly, um, polyethylene terephthalate, or PET fibers, originated its approval by the fact that it was approved for uh, similar uh, materials used in hernia meshes. So it went downhill after that. We've known for decades of the potential risks and complications of the use of polypropylene or plastic devices in the human body, and yet we still feel that it is an appropriate form of uh, biological implant to be used for hernia meshes, for example. And so with, with everyone that follows me, you understand that we're trying to show the link between the foreign body reactions of any biological implant and what's called the autoimmune autoinflammatory or autoinflammatory autoimmune uh, syndrome induced by adjuvants or ASIA. So I'm just going to shorten all that and say Asia. When you think about any potential foreign body reaction that can occur in the body, the big umbrella, the big everything that covers everything is, is called Asia. So autoimmune, autoinflammatory uh, syndrome induced by adjuvants is Asia. And the adjuvant is the actual biological implant. So if you're talking about eShore, we're talking about the eShore uh, uh, components are metallic, which is an adjuvant, the nickel and titanium or we're talking about the PET fibers, which is an adjuvant. We're talking about the plastic uh, component of that. So now we're look, uh, we look and address the issues related to polypro polypropylene or a more general categories of plastic. And this is most commonly associated with inguinal uh, or uh, hernia meshes. So what is the association there? Well, we do know that polypropylene, polyethylene, uh, polyethylene terephthalate, uh, plastic and um, dacron uh, polyester, for example, all of these, when placed in the human body, cause a localized inflammatory response. The severity of the response is depending on the patient. Many, many times it's associated with age, it's associated with whether or not you're a male or a female, and of uh, uh, genetic factors that are associated with the Asia effect. So, what we have known for a long time, and again, I, I encourage everyone to read about Asia. Look it up. There's plenty, many, dozens, dozens of, of publications related to Asia. This is not a new concept. Now, who it's a new concept for is going to be your doctors because they're totally clueless in many cases. Doctors that routinely put in hernia meshes have no clue as to the Asia effect, and yet they keep insisting that it's a safe product to use. Now, this is uh, for my friends that are in the United Kingdom and Scotland and uh, Australia. We're talking about all of, of the world in general. This particular report that I that I posted here that we're going to tag is related to a publication that was uh, came out of Brazil, uh, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tag you on it. But basically, it does support the fact that um, there is indications that polypropylene meshes are associated with Asia, and the Asia effect is like I said, not only localized but systemic. So you have an inflammatory reaction that it. And again, mind you that the the that there is an uh, has always been known that there's an inflammatory reaction with with hernia meshes. What they do is they they incorporate themselves into the surrounding tissue, forming scar tissue formation. That scar tissue is stronger and more resilient than biological uh, mesh for my, biological uh, hernia uh, material uh, that will degrade over time. 
And so uh, why it's so popular to use uh, a non-degradable uh, plastic meshes is that the fact that they don't degrade and their strength is maintained over years or even decades. The problem is that there's a percentage of patients that suffer from a foreign body reaction related to these implants. And what happens there is the foreign body reaction causes constricture of, uh, of, the, of the tissue around it, causes significant amount of pain, and can cause scar tissue formation at anything that touches that mesh on one side versus the other. So most people uh, can appreciate the fact that the hernia may be felt underneath the skin. But what happens is, it, and can be tender at, at times, or maybe chronically tender. But what may uh, people don't understand is that on the opposite side, on the, on the abdominal wall side, these hernia meshes produce an inflammatory reaction causing scar uh, tissue to form around the hernia and therefore you have scar tissue that's attached to your intestines that causes scarring and pain uh, uh, that that is chronic then and then if you have scarring of your intestines this can lead to problems where you may need to have surgery to break down the scar tissue which then again causes even more scar tissue formation or even the removal of partial pars uh, portions of your bowel related to the placement of a hernia mesh now if you have an inguinal mesh then you can also have significant problems in the groin a groin pain which is debilitating so that's just a localized uh, effect now we're talking about systemic now the systemic effect of asia is from head to toe basically so what we're talking about there and another uh, discussion that i will have is the concept of uh, neuro endocrine activation what happens is that part of the concept related to brain fog chronic headaches migraine headaches and the such is associated with an endocrine stimulation of a systemic nature because of the foreign body reaction of a hernia mesh so if you have an inguinal mesh and you start suffering from migraine headaches, or you have an inguinal mesh, and you suffer from um, from uh, a brain fog. That's the association. That systemic effect. Your body's trying to uh, rid itself of the of the mesh in the inguinal area or uh, hernia from abdominal hernia, for example. And you start to get brain fog. You start to get uh, symptoms like Alzheimer's. And your doctor's telling you that one is not associated with the other. Absolutely, it's associated. One is associated with the other. The fact of the matter is that. We, this is associated with Asia. So as I said, I've included it in, in a tag here so that you can read along. It's pretty straightforward, but I, again, I'm a doctor and most people aren't, and I can appreciate the fact that um, that they may not understand that. But the fact of the matter is the principal issues and principal side effects to the Asia effect with, uh, with inguinal meshes, hernia meshes, and mesh uh, plastic materials in general is the such. Uh, for here as an example, it gives uh, talks about pain, uh, muscle pain, uh, inflammation of the muscle tissue, arthritis, uh, author, um, and uh, arthralgia, which is uh, pain around the joints. We're talking about chronic fatigue, non uh, uh, restorative sleep, and sleep disorders, neurological manifestations, which I talked about as a neuroendocrine issue. Um, and we're talking about uh, eye and um, difficulty with seeing, blurred vision, cognitive changes, uh, brain uh, fog, uh, memory loss, and uh, what we're looking at there too is how do you take how do you take care of this problem? Well, in general, you remove the mesh. Removing the mesh will significantly improve symptoms in the majority of patients, but the problem is that it may be very difficult or impossible to remove a mesh once it's been placed. And second of all, there is almost impossible to find a doctor that's willing to remove a mesh uh, unless they have an idea that they're going to be able to remove it completely or that they have some type of substitute. Because once you cut out a mesh and you have a hernia, it may be literally impossible to reapproximate the tissue surrounding it and you took out a significantly larger piece than you, of the hernia that you originally had, these symptoms get to tend to be worse and worse and worse over time. As you get older, your uh, Asia symptoms tend to get, wor get worse, and uh, you suffer from that for the rest of your life. So the key to everything, and I keep want to end with my comments for everything, is informed consent. Obviously, the majority of patients that have had uh, meshes placed have no idea that these things have been going on, and they've been documented for decades. So you were not properly informed. Now, what are you going to do with improper informed consent is to try to change things. Argue these points with your doctors. Argue it with the medical community, and try to think has changed. That's how I'm going to end almost all of my comments. If you weren't properly informed, you should have been. And the, and the key to changing everything is to be properly informed. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.